those. Fin Finland, right? Yeah, that's right. We don't get to see many Finnish players these days, uh, at least in Hearthstone outside of Speeds. Is this the first time we see what Ursia on Wait, stream? what has happened this game? It's 0-0 zero, zero and does like two, three Jaraxxuses. What? There's, there's two Jaraxxuses and a <laughs> With a faceless... Just yeah, face this manipulator happened. probably. I'm oh like, did he silence both Jaraxxus that happen to be at the same health? But look at the the history bar tells us everything. He's playing a faceless manipulator on a silenced Jaraxxus. On a silenced Jaraxxus. So now the Morganis buffs three creatures on board. Jaraxxus becoming a massive 5 11 and 5 10. Does he want to do that? He's playing against a wow. secret or a mid range paladin. That is awesome. Yeah, go for it, man. What a wacky, what a wacky board. Yeah. Just yeah, face, it really right? is. That's the only way to describe Ecop very eloquently put. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you really do anything with this? If you could push face and just you have two power overwhelmings, I say you just go for this lethal. Yeah, sure. I mean, what are you afraid of? Oh, the score is apparently 1-1. One, one. Yeah, uh, we'll let you guys uh, see the overlay update in just a second. It's not 1-0. Uh, it's like all this time passed and they played one game. That would have been pretty nuts. So uh, the knife juggler is going to come out here and maybe get some fortunate juggles. Oh, he juggles the face. It's the worst one. Another oh one to the face. Oh, my God. All right, well, here we go. More rapid fire. Let's go. Muster for battle. Reporting for duty. No! Juggler, where are you aiming? Okay. Reporting for duty. Jesus Christ. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, wait, I forgot the directions are buff. So, that is 3, 6, 10, 14 damage. Oh, yeah, well. That's a little bit short. A little bit short. That is a big board to handle. Well, you can live tap into Hellfire. Yes, or Dark Bomb. And you'd have exact lethal. Ooh, that's okay. He can silence his own Draxus again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess you just play cleanup crew with these Draxi. And that is the correct you term. Just heal bot? Is that the plural of Draxus? Yeah. Because it's not very often that you see two silenced Lord of the... Eridor Burning Legion? What is it? Eridor Lords. Help me out here. Eridor Lords of the Burning Legion. Ah, right. Thank you. Consecration ends up being pretty nice here to speed it up. And, uh, you know, Ursi with Jaraxxus, Melganus, and he's very clear that he's playing defensive cards like Chow. Um, I wonder if he's playing the OTK Warlock. With Faces Manipulator, with faces manipulator and case, I right? think he might have an Arcane Golem sometime. Yeah, there's definitely Arcane Golem yes. in there. How about a third Power Overwhelming in the deck? Do you do you like that? That's 12 to 16 I damage, just from the Arcane Golem. <laughs> Golem. But that's Warden not Warden Infiltrator's not bad! Well, it allows him to push for 10 damage next turn if he wants to. Because yeah. he just saw two Consecrations being played. I don't think there's anything else that it's even close to the best pick. Because the Voidwalker gets killed by the Puddle Stomper. You could definitely argue. Ooh, that's nice. Right, very nice. Puddle Stomper, if it wasn't there, you can argue the other one was better. Wow, that's great. Defender of Argus right within the mana slot. I think you should play it instantly now. It does trade poorly with the Puddle Stomper. You might consider BGH as well, but I think... I think both accomplish the same thing. It depends on what uh, did Tom of already play. Because if there was a big game hunter, uh, sorry, a Dr. Boom already played, then I would say that you can go with the big game hunter. Thank you, Innkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I, I, well, I'm learning so much about Hearthstone today, man. I'm learning that Jaraxxus can be silenced twice. Off the face manipulator. That looks nasty. That is pretty bad. If, um, that lay on hands was actually it. huge because uh, the the combo lock is just yeah the combo is basically now completely worthless. Now there's owl, so the owl can get past the taunt. It's just that there's so much health to burn yeah, through, and there, the, it the, the, there it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, that's what I mean. The health is the factor, and okay. also the fact that uh, faceless manipulator is gone already. That actually um, removes a huge chunk of burst, unless 
There's another Can you one. read what I'm thinking? Ah, yeah, you ah. got it, E-Cup. Unless there's a second fiercest manipulator, and that is what we call going full Kripparian. Because Crip told me that you never play OZK Warlock without the second faceless manipulator. And I'm like, come on, Crip. And he's like, no. <laughs> but it's, he, no. He didn't even say it's pretty good. He said, no, it's really good. Because you can just put your opponent in a situation when he thinks that there's no second faceless manipulator. Yeah. And also because you can use it practically. Like, the first one is probably to answer a threat or to... You know, it controls the board. Although now, considering that uh, he played his arcane golem right now, I doubt that there's going to be a second faceless. Yeah, I, I agree. I generally think it's too greedy. Otherwise, I, I, I'm in that. I'm in wow, that. The faceless manipulator would, would have been great against Tyrion. Oh yeah, copying a Tyrion, pretty good. Mm. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, on that board with Malganus in hand, Drax is as a 315 or whatever it was, looked like it was a 39. Still pretty reasonable. Yeah, for sure. In this case, uh, Tomov, man, he's just trying not to die, and he's instead opting to play Dr. Doom for the more, <laughs> most board presence. Four, six, seven, uh, eight, 15 damage right now. But he can BGH. I wonder just what's been remaining in his deck here. He might have another form of direct damage, like like Dark Bombs, but that would be just short of killing his opponent. Also, what's the sequencing here? Like, do you want to BGH first before you do something like Implosion or afterwards? I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's a really tough decision. Yeah, just because you want to maximize the board, and then how do the boom bots interact with it? Plus, do you want BGH to be on the risk of dying from the boom bots if it even happens or triggers? Uh, that's very risky. I mean, the problem with the WPOs in hand is the fact that you probably need to attack. Oh my god! Yeah, he needed to attack with the 1 1 first. Or the 1 2 first. But maybe he did that intentionally. Yeah, that was intentional. Maybe because uh, in he, case wanted, he rolled 4. He wanted, he wanted the imp to hit. Uh, the imp to get hit. Yeah. Those are some good boom bots. Um, yeah, I guess that wasn't too bad. Here we go, though. I think it's time for Big Daddy Tyrion. And that's your we'll best. That's your best for push for lethal, owl. I think. Well, hold on. Actually, maybe the Lotheb and Healbot technically put more power on the board. But I think Tyrion has the biggest impact. Though, it's two sure. damage off. Twelve, fourteen, one damage. One damage off. Dark Peddler. Here we go. Here go. Here we go. No, Elven Archer. Oh. Uh, yeah, I get some water calls so he could pick up a dark bomb or something. Dark bomb? Shadow Flame doesn't. No. no. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, is the hype? Hype, hype? Type, Life tap, 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 tap into something. Tap well, into tap. Hellfire. Ta no, you don't have enough man for yeah, Hellfire. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Tap dark, dark bomb. bomb. Dark bomb. Yeah. Dark bomb is out. I just really wanted Elven Archer to be lethal. <laughs> <laughs> if you tap, if you tap for Dark Bomb, you don't have enough mana for it. Oh yeah, right. You will, uh, yeah, it'll be costing six mana. Silencing the peddler. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's some really controversial DM. He knows that two consecrations have been used, but he's still gonna trade anyways. And uh, just gonna try to board control this down. But there is a heal bot waiting on the other end. And a low step. Like the low step will completely down. knock down the yeah. combo. It won't lock down a Shadow Flame though, and Shadow Flame is pretty reasonable on that board. So, after he Shadow Flames. Wait, uh, 6, 10, 13, 17. He's always 2 damage off still. Oh, sorry, uh, no, 4 damage off. My apologies. So. I guess you could play defensive here in Shadow Flame. You, you see your opponent's like almost out of cards here. So you want to uh, Shadow Flame the Big Game Hunter after the attack? Mm -hmm. And, oh wait, does it make any sense? Yeah, yeah it has. you can it trade has, your smaller does. targets. Because you can trade with the Owl, with the... Uh, Dark Peddler. With the Tyrion, and with yeah. the Lotep too. If you want to save Shadow Flame, you also could Power Overwhelming, but I think Shadow Flame is just a little bit better here. 
It's actually a lot better because you kept a more health as opposed to 3-1. Equality, not going to be that great here. I guess we just develop Quartermaster as well. You don't want it to kill off the 3-3 for nothing, so this is completely reasonable. This one damage of lethal right now. Jesus. Is he, is what he is with these games today? Life tap, here is, we go. Is he going to be ballsy enough to life tap here? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah! Hellfire! Yeah, he, knew, he probably knew yeah. he had a lot of outs there. There it is. What a crazy game. That's a very decisive game three win, putting Ursi on game point. By the way, I just want to point out that this deck actually made it to the Swiss round. Yeah, the OTK Warlock? So Although, many different Warlocks. You're not, you're not even sure if that was the responsible deck for getting him through, though. That's true. He would have just won it with yeah. other two decks all the time. It could be. I mean, we see the Paladin logo right there. Maybe that was a big <laughs> factor. <laughs> Yeah, unless it's something weird. I mean, he brought O2K Warlock. That's a very interesting pocket that is, you know, very reasonable against slow decks like Priest. Um, oh, yeah, because that's the most popular class here. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to analyze what this <laughs> deck's function is. It, it's reasonable against... Um, it's reasonable against some aggro decks, surprisingly, because you bring a lot of, like, survival and healing because you know you have to keep life tapping a lot, so you naturally have heals in it. Mm -hmm. So maybe he feels like that is a pretty good response if he expects, like, a lot of hunter and, ag like, mech shamans and, and other stuff. I don't know. It, it, we'll have to see more tech as we go into game number four here. But how it fares against a aggressive hunter, because it might be a, yeah. um Achilles feat, right? In this situation, on yes. This deck. And um, here's some, here's some interesting questions here. Like, would you keep Void Caller? I know you have Mortal Coils, Dark Bombs. Um, I think you should when you're going bombs. second because you can get a Lucky Malganis and just win the game by that. Yeah, definitely. Even even getting uh, something like a Jaraxxus out is good too. If it's you can true. if you can taunt it up. Yeah, good point. Good point. And Tomov, uh, his curve is. Basically, or centered around this uh, leper gnome, he's gonna need that to hit drive home a lot of damage. Now, um, I remember Lothar. If you can go down memory lane, that mm -hmm. I played an OTK warlock against yeah, you. I, and I remember that. I remember specifically designing it against decks like Hunter, and I still lost Hunter anyways. No, I was playing secret pa uh, secret mage against you three zero. Oh, did you three zero? I yeah. thought you played Druid or no, no, or no, 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 no. I, I was playing Secret uh, Mage and I three zero Strife Guards, three zero you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. Wow, I I completely forgot about that point. I thought I was I thought I was like, oh, it was Delay. I played the OTK Hunter against uh, OTK Warlock against the Hunter, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, this sucks. And um, that's something that this deck sometimes experiences. It's like. Because you life tap, you're naturally always susceptible to the hunter hero power. Look so at this. Dark Bomb hitting the abusive sergeant. So RC definitely respecting every single point of damage that the hunter can put out. But now yeah. kind of getting wrecked by Hunter <laughs> here. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's that's as bad as it gets. Let's li literally can't get worse than that. He just played Arcane Golem with no downsides. Yeah, the Dark Bomb is gone to handle it. So It's better than Arcane Golem, it's a beast. It triggers the no, kill command. No, it's not strictly better because if he had coin him it. Mm. Coin <laughs> him it. I wonder if that card we ever played in competitive t environment. It will be by an unstable portal one day. Oh yeah, sure. We'll see if there's ever a meta defining beast. Deck. It will be when you see other random shenanigans that discover legendary minion. You'll see it. You'll see it one day. It's like me telling people that um, zero mana cost m m cars Wisp? are broken and then yeah, everyone you think brings up broken. Wisp and then I say, yeah, it will be broken. Gotcha. It's very similar. Well, you got to do something. I anticipate that maybe he's going to just play Void, uh, void Caller and sort of bluff the demon in a way, but just in the sense that he needs minion presence. The alternative is to play like Defender now, but I think you can get better value for it. Hmm. What would you do here? Would you kill off the Beast of Huffer or would you kill off the Knife Juggler? I would go for killing the Beast and silencing the Knife Juggler. I will actually play Double Owls here. 
double O. Yep. This way you set up a better defensive Agus next turn. And uh, yeah. basically that's the only reason. Mm. Well, I can definitely get behind killing the beast. I'm just always afraid of the juggler taking off that twilight trick. Here we go. Oh, oh no. my god. Another huffer. I told you, man, this deck is supposed to be like pretty good against aggro because you're naturally going to be defending and trying to tap a lot. But Oh, well, there's a, there's a demon, and that is one of the biggest you could ask for. Yeah, that is the interaction I was referring to previously. Get the Jaraxxus into play and have the taunt. Well, the Malganus would have been better, yeah, especially when there's kill command and quick shot yeah, <laughs> over at the of course, end. Of course, but what can you do? Like, you have to, you have to go for it. Yeah. You don't. You won't have time to wait until turn nine to play it. Man, and you have to trade both those. In. Well, yeah, you have to trade both those in. I was like, you can't leave anything up here. You can't leave the juggler. You can't leave the hopper. Both of them are extremely threatening. And you just go ahead and defend her up. And that means he's officially on a clock. Because kill command. Another kill command. And another kill command. Just going to hero power. Wow. Fastest turn ever. No, but he still can tap into maybe one more thing. He's not going to tap, though, because he's just scared. Yeah. All right. Well, it was a good try. I mean... This this warlock deck is susceptible to dying sometimes. Many when your times. opponent runs two huffers and happens to have two kill commands. <laughs> Those were some pretty good huffer rolls right there. Yeah, I mean, but the hunter definitely favored in this matchup. And yeah. now it all comes down to the final game: hunter versus paladin. So the hunter versus paladin matchup still tends to lean towards the hunter these days, but. Let's see what Ursi has in his list. I mean, if it's secrets, if it's mid-range, it's still capable of taking out the hunter. It's not impossible. Yeah, we'll see. It all comes down to how well he can handle the early aggression and if he has, if he has heals to back it up. Must for battle is a good start, though. Over in Tom, if he yeah. needs something better, looks more like proactive. a mid-range paladin. Yes, Defender of Argus is actually the key card there that tells us that. You don't really see Defender of Argus in Secret Paladin because on turn four, you'd rather play something proactive like Pilot Shredder. Um, and you don't really want something like Defender of Argus. You just really want something like really powerful, like other stuff besides. Yeah, Ursi basically wanted to mulligan into Zombie Chow, I assume. Just getting rid of all the cards. Mm -hmm. Having that curve is so important. So the hunter is playing what looks to be uh, a hybrid hunter with things like hun uh, Hunter's Mark in it. What do you think about that, Ecop? I do like um, Hunter's Mark. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice card. You have uh, many ways of interacting with it. You have the Haunted Creeper, the Knife Juggler, the Unleashed Hounds, obviously. So uh, it's a really good tempo card. When, you, when you're going into a turn where you want to play high main, uh, usually it can be a really clunky turn, it can get punished a lot, but when you have a uh, Hunter's Mark um, to like have a good tempo swing um, on that same turn, um, it, it can be really devastating. Nice. The Hunter's Mark might be a really huge difference in this matchup. Especially with all those huge ranges that the uh, Paladin can drop. Mm, well, uh, Ursi goes for a, uh, a buff here on the Silverhand Recruit, the mini Corn Master, so to speak. And the hunter just hits the most awkward curve here, but that's kind of what you are susceptible to with a build like this. Mm -hmm. The hybrid list is supposed to always have the best of both worlds, but sometimes you have the worst uh, by having too high of a curve with a little bit too much awkward minions and not enough actual um, stuff to do. And the hunter's mug is already dealing with a creature, which is needed because you, uh, as we were talking about before, the, the hunter has to have advantage of, on the board in the beginning of the game to just squeeze that few points of damage with uh, small minions. I mean, the upcoming, like the, the early turns were a little bit awkward for Tomov, but his upcoming turns um, with coin high main into high main, well. but that's, that has been denied by Lothep. Yeah, well, I guess you're just going to have to go ahead and hit face. I mean, that's pretty much what it is at this point. You don't really have anything else to do, so you're just going to go for the high mains, and that's going to give some real good setup turns because you have Consecration coming up here. There's just like insta call, right? 
Mm. No way I you don't so. play Consecration here. That's right. Low tap is so that was like the most devastating card you could have had there. Denying the coin high main and also having the body on the board now to challenge the high main. Yes, especially with the silence in the hand, which allowed us to trade the 5-4 into 6-5, which is huge investment from uh, Tomov. And now Irsi will be even able to just go back to his initial 30 HP points if he goes for the trade right <laughs> yeah. now and play menu, uh, sorry, healbot. And I think that's the correct play, even though you have the turn 7 goblin which is usually the turn seven play, but uh, in this situation, I think that's the better, better you could, option. You could wait with the heal bot. You're not in that much of a danger with 22 health. You could play a better minion like the pilot, the pilot Shredder, for example. But wouldn't you like like just to be on curve in this situation? Uh, he's thinking about Trucevil championing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, that that's is Savannah. That is maybe a little bit too bold, yeah, I think. Well, yeah. he, has, he has a heal bot. That yeah, might not be oh, so actually, bad. Actually, yeah, you're right. And he can now push for yeah. potential lethal. Having the glow tip on the board still actually it does push a lot of damage. So yeah, I, I, I guess I like this. It's That's lethal good. for the following turn. This is this wasn't is the nice. rifle with uh, mini bot anyway, because you have three six and it will be at seventeen. Uh, no, it was no. He loses. So I actually like this play. Um, and then he, he can just follow up. Boom. And no one expects the follow-up boom. He's like, you didn't play it on seven? <laughs> what? <laughs> what about Altus Shredder and the Defender of Argus? Because you push for three, five, seven, eight, eight damage. Nah, probably not. I think with the prospect of boom bots making up that damage, not to mention that you get a lot of juggles, oh, I'd be more cool. comfortable doing that. Wow. Not bad. Sure. Just hit face. And now Hunter is on the verge of just getting bullied out. Despite having some of the most powerful cards, he's drawn a little bit too late. But you know one card that can always save him. Doomsayer. We're Doomsayer, boys. Let's go. Giddy up. Nah, not even close. And you know what? Tomoff's dreams has been ended. Ursi well, advances to the round of eight. Congratulations to Ursi. Tomoff... Unfortunately, this is end of the road in this tournament. It's kind of sad when you see it cut off after the Swiss rounds and then, you know, people are getting butchered in the single elimination, but yeah. ha that's how it is. It, it's just how it, you, it, it's just the single elimination playoffs. Uh, at a certain point, you lose and you have to just go home. Like, you, you can't be given more choices or chances, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, so, you know, at this stage, these guys have put a lot of heart and soul in it, especially the French players. You know, the French players are a very talented uh, group of individual players, but a lot of people don't get to see them often because they do tend to have their own insular community with a lot of stuff. They have their own French events and, you know, French streams and whatnot. Um, but a lot of these players, are they're, they have some serious skills. You know, you look at um, Purple kind of being one of those ambassadors who goes on both sides of the English and French. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you do see guys... You know, like um, you need coming to some of those events or Lowello. Um, Yogg is one of those guys, too. And even like Maverick, who's kind of part of that at Circle as well. They're all great players. And so I think Tomov, uh, you'll probably be see him again in the future. I'm really glad to see Ursi get this far in this tournament. He's one of the guys who actually beat me uh, early on in the tournament in the Swiss rounds. Um, so I'm happy to see him go this far already. Sure. And and um, of course, uh, he's um, a definitely a very good player. Like when I when he, when he added me, I saw his rank. He's like fif number fifteen legend right now. Fifty? Fifteen. Fifteen. Wow, that's wow. High. very impressive. Yep. Yeah, I mean, some of these guys they've really studied Hearthstone a lot and they've shown their skills. Uh, we'll continue to get to know them a little bit more. So congratulations to Ursi. Uh, with that, I believe Nimsh is going to have us do an interview with Ursi, so come us and join us. This is going to be great. I always love talking to Finnish people. Yeah, right here. Have a seat. Take the headphones, please. It's, 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 it's kind of a requirement, man. Yeah, it was an intense series. Yeah, holy, holy crap, guys. <laughs> yeah, so uh, welcome to the desk, man. How you doing? Hello, guys. I'm doing uh, pretty great. That's good. Well, uh, you came off of uh, a win here, so the round of eight. So this is probably the best performance you've ever had in Hearthstone, right? Yeah, this is by far. And uh, I had a one big tournament win before. I won a, an event in Finland uh, at the start of this year. And after that, kind of slowed down. But uh, it's great to be, be, be here and uh, be able to win a lot of games. So I'm, I'm very happy for myself.
That's awesome. Um, can we get some more background on, uh, you know, what, have you been playing card games for a while, or were you playing other games and you kind of saw what Hearthstone was and started learning that as well? I actually picked up Hearthstone quite early when it came out, mm -hmm. but I was more of a casual role player and stuff. I just uh, <laughs> collected cards, and I, I was like, I got Legend all the time, but uh, I just uh, really went for, you know, Golden cards and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and I focused on that part of the game first, and then mostly Ladder. And uh, not so many tournaments. So every now and then, some some small online stuff, you know. But uh, but uh, hopefully, I can get to play some bigger tournaments. So are you uh, considering yourself a more casual player? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, okay. all of the time, I have really tried to improve myself. But uh, I also have this kind of fun aspect that was really, really important to me. Like, for example, you compare to. Kibler, he just really wants to have fun, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he's a he's a great player. So yeah. that's how I would describe. Gotcha. Cool. So well, I mean, we saw that with some very uh, interesting decks and outcomes there, right? The uh, OTK Warlock coming to mind. Really fun stuff. What inspires you to play that compared to some other tried and true tests of you know Druid, Warrior, Paladin, you know that kind of stuff? Uh, this is actually something I worked on uh, for this month on ladder, basically. And uh, I got the idea of Silver Name. I think he was top two at one point with a combo lock of sorts, but it was it was pretty slow, and I made it faster and made it more into my liking. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring it because I put so much work on it. And also, I think people will get uh, really surprised occasionally by what they're facing. Like right now, you see a warlock, you're like, first, is it Zoo or Handlock? No. Then it must be Rena Lock. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's duplicates of this and this and this. So. What what in the world is going on? So, eventually, good players. I mean, I admit it might have been a little bit of a mistake because good players here at the tournament, they they figure it out much earlier and can play around the combo. But as you saw from, for example, the I think the stream came in right when I had a Jaraxxus mm. yeah on the board and the demons kind of snowballed. So uh, you don't need the combo to win. You can just have, like the deck is combining draw and two different great combos, which are the Demon combo and the OTK combo. Yeah, yeah. So you draw into either one, and either one is fine, and you can also, like, faces the void color stuff, and it, it becomes just, it can snowball super fast. Cool stuff. Okay. Cool well, stuff. I have a question uh, regarding that deck. Uh, what was the score, if you remember, during the Swiss portion of that particular deck? For this deck? Uh, I don't actually have the numbers in my head, but uh, I had one 3 with it mm -hmm. in the start against a relatively... Uh, well, not a, not a top, top level player. But you uh, can say it. You can say this is a weak player. It's <laughs> okay, he, he was he was a weak player. <laughs> <laughs> Good, <laughs> I love it. Player. Keep keep feeding me lines like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I didn't get to play it. I feel like controller war control warrior was uh, mostly the deck that carried me here. That was the like, I think uh, Ecop remembers my control warrior. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Okay. Loving yeah. it, man. Loving it. And uh, yeah, so uh, ma I didn't. Maybe something like three, three off the top of my head for for the warlock. Okay, not bad, not bad. I got another question for you. Um, did you going into this tournament? Um, did you expect to end up in the position where you are right now? Uh, well, I was I was prepared for it, prepared for it. I put a lot of work into into my decks and into my lineup, and I think everything is like for the last two or three weeks. I just first I chose a lineup and then chose all the all the cards and I'm really happy for every individual card everywhere so I just put a lot of work into that and I was I was ready to hope for whatever basically so I'm I'm still prepared to fight forwards from here all this right. is this is not so where, how, do you where like where how, do you how do you like your chances how do I like my chances well compared to other guys it's it's slightly below the average of what is up ahead because uh well, I think the most important point is my lineup is really weak to combo druid. There is a few combo druids out there, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to face them. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see, man. Good luck uh, in the next round. You're you're in the round of eight, so you got some points. You got some money, and we'll see uh, how that continues to pan out. In the meantime, uh, we're going to set it to a break and get ready to see more round of sixteen matches. So when we come back, uh, more Grand Prix here at Dreampack Winter will continue.